This is GM Daniel Naroditsky. We are watching Shakri Armamid Yarov taking on Grandmaster Vidit Gujarati at the 2021 FIDE World Rapid and Blitz. This promises to be a fast-paced game. Both of these players are Blitz juggernauts. They're very well known as some of the best Blitz players in the world, especially Mamid Yarov, who has such a pedigree, such experience in Blitz and players waiting for the Arbiter to announce the start of the round. <laughs> Shakriya adjusting his pen. There's the handshake and there's the start. Shakriya choosing one D4. What opening will we see? A Nimzo Indian? No, Knight F3, D5. And Shakriya going Knight C3. This is the entry point to many different variations. Ragazin, Queen's Gamma decline. And Vidit going for the semi-Tarash with C5. That is not... A line that you see every day, and C takes D4, but this has been very popular recently. He takes D5, Bishop G5. They're following the main line of a variation that has been played a lot recently, including by Magnus Carlsen. Black, Black accepts the isolated queen pawn, but with the move knight C6, Black dislodges the white queen from D4 and gains the tempo for his development. So it's generally considered a very double-edged position. Vidit deciding to castle first. Now the question for Chakra, where to put his light squared bishop? He decides on the modest bishop e2, h6 chasing away the bishop from g5. Chakra obliges. Taking the knight on f6 is always inadvisable in these types of positions. And now Vidit developing his knight to c6. Chakra bringing his queen all the way back to d1, making sure that it won't be harassed by any other black pieces. And now the key question, can white get complete control of the square in front of the d5 pawn for a blitz game? I'm not sure I love this choice by Vidit. He's going to have to expend a lot of energy on defending the d5 pawn, but let's see. He might be experienced in these positions. I'm sure he's analyzed them. Now the question is, should black get that queen off of d8? Queen b6 looks pretty interesting here for black as a way of connecting the rooks. Vidit deciding uh, to move his rook first. Rook c8, now a3 by Shakriya. Both players still making improving moves. The position relatively quiet, nothing. Uh, nothing much to write home about for either side, but things almost always heat up when you have an isolated queen pawn. So let's see which player decides to sharpen things up first. Shakriyar has many ways to improve his position. He can play rook c1, b2, b4. Eventually, he can put a knight on d4, blockading the isolated queen pawn that Vidit has. And Vidit spending a significant amount of time here as he drops now below two minutes, trying to figure out how to arrange his pieces, and knight e4 offering a trade of several minor pieces. Shakriar says, okay, I accept. Bishop takes e7. Now Vidit could capture that bishop two different ways. He could also capture Shakriar's knight on c3, and that would lead to some incredible complications and possibly a lot of trades. Vidit, knight takes e7. Now Shakriar could take the knight on e4 and then position his other knight on d4, but if he wants to keep the IQP for black... He can also move his c3 knight outward to b5 and then back down to d4 as a way of blockading. And this is a big decision now for Chakra, who takes the first think of the game. Vidit much, much lower on the clock. Chakra has got 50 seconds over him. And Chakra decides to take the knight, changing the pawn structure. And there goes that knight to d4. I like White's position here. That knight on d4 is a monster. But I think Vidit is doing a very good job of stabilizing things. And he's got no clear targets in his position, especially if he puts a bishop on d5 to supervise that e4 pawn. So White slightly better. Up a minute on the clock. That probably concerns me a little bit more. Vidit does go bishop d5. Now, will Shakura move the queen off of d1 and then replace it with a rook? He does. Queen up to d2. Connecting the rooks. I think he wants rooks on d1 and c1. White is slightly better. Vidit developing his queen to b6. He's going to try to get his own rook from f8 to d8. And will Vidit continue his nice defensive effort? Rook a to c1 by Shakura contesting the c-file. Now it's Vidit's turn. Rook f to d8 looks very natural here, but... Maybe a trade could be considered, and Vidit does trade on c1, and will he try to trade the other rook? No, the other rook he puts on d8, so he x-rays white's queen on d2, but the knight on d4 is still incredibly stable. So for Vidit, knight e7 to c6 could be considered on the next move as a way to try to trade that knight off of d4. If he can get the knight off d4, I think black will have solved essentially all of his middle game problems, and so Shakriar is investing quite a bit of time here. Trying to figure out an antidote to that. He plays h3, so he allows knight c6. Let's see if it obliges. He does. Knight c6. How does Shakriar continue his initiative? Because if the knight on d4 is traded on black's terms, then black will have no problems here. Maybe rook d1 could be considered. No, but then there's bishop b3. Shakriar hesitating. He decides to trade on c6. And now Vidit, what will he take back with? What will he take back with? 
He takes back with the bishop, doesn't want to ruin his pawn structure. Shakura are moving the queen out of dodge, queen c3. I still think white's got a very small pull here. Shakura could now bring his e2 bishop out to c4 and try to pressure that f7 pawn. The pawn on e4 is not actually a weakness. The problem is that it blunts black's bishop. That bishop on c6 is just not very happy there. It's not controlling a lot of squares. So black's position is still uncomfortable. Now Vidit has dropped below a minute as he tries to trade those light squared bishops. Bishop to b5, that's a good move. The time situation for Vidit is perhaps the most worrisome. His position looks very, very stable here. Now, will Shakriar trade those bishops or will, he, or will he move his bishop to g4? Let's see. Bishop, bishop g4. Shakriar trying to keep as many pieces on the board as possible in order to exploit his lead in the clock. That makes a lot of sense. Vidit, he says, hey, I'm just going to follow you around. Bishop to d7. Now, his rook on d8 is protected by the queen on b6. So rook d1 now is not effective. Shakriar has to find some other way to decline the trade of bishops. Will Shakurar go bishop h5 and keep playing the cat and mouse game? He does not. He decides to trade. Now we have a heavy piece endgame. Queen and rook versus queen and rook. Queen e5. White still keeping the, the foot on the gas pedal. Vidit is really uncomfortable here. Queen e8 check is a threat. The pawn on e4 is hanging. Can Vidit defend it? Can he defend that pawn on e4? And can he defend against the infiltration of white's pieces to the 8th rank as he drops now down to 30 seconds on the clock? How is Shakra managing to keep the pressure going. This is really impressive. Positional stuff by Mamed Yarvin. Vidit now down to 20 seconds as he glances nervously over at the clock. Can he find an accurate defense? Can he find any defense against the threats of Rook C8, Queen E8 check, and Queen takes E4? It's 10 seconds for Vidit. He's got to move. Queen E6 offering a trade of Queens, but now the end game, the Rook end game is definitely going to be much better for White. Maybe even a pawn up. Shakarar with a big decision, though. He can keep the Queens on the board. He can play Queen B8 check and win the pawn on A7 if he wants, but that would mean a little uh, less active of a queen he will have on a7 and that will give Vidit a little bit of a respite and perhaps a chance to activate his own rook on d2. Now Shakurar is below a minute. He can't fall asleep here either. His time is dwindling. A big decision and he decides to play rook c8 check getting that rook involved and queen takes e6 a trade of queens and a rook endgame. And white is definitely in the driver's seat here but Vidit with obvious drawing chances here. He has got the threat of playing rook d1 check and then rook back to d2. And now Shakurar's pawns are not going to be immune. And that is why he plays g4, an excellent move, making sure that the king can remain on g2 in order to defend the f2 pawn. Eight seconds for Vidit. A very difficult endgame here to defend as he tries to activate his king, king g6. Shakurar bringing his rook down to c4, hunting for that e4 pawn. It cannot be defended. Vidit is going to end up down a pawn, but that doesn't mean the game is over. He tries to get his own rook active. Four seconds on the clock. Rook d2. Shakurar taking that pawn on e4. Vidit defending the e6 pawn with king f6. Now a clear healthy pawn up for Shakriar. He should be able to convert this given Vidit's time on the clock, but it's not easy. b6, Shakriar getting his own king up and getting it active. Vidit trying to close down the king side with g5. A great move. You can see the nervousness here. Shakriar senses that he's close to winning this game, but some technique is still required. Vidit taking on b2, another trade of pawns. Rook takes a7. Now if Vidit can manage to trade the last pair of pawns on the queen side, that might actually be a draw. The four on three on the on the king side is very, very hard to win. And so Vidit going directly for a trade of pawns. Rook b2, Rook Shakriar, Rook a5, cat and mouse game there. But b4 is now a threat. Vidit can basically force the trade of pawns. And he goes b4 and Shakriar has really no choice but to trade. Rook takes b4. Now this is very close to a draw, but a lot of work remains for Black. And he's got three seconds. He's got to move. He takes on h4. He's got very bad pawns. e6 and h6 are both isolated. Rook b2, he tries to hunt for white's pawns. Shakriar brings his king back. Vidit keeps looking over nervously at the clock with two seconds. Rook e2. Can Shakriar find ways to create problems for Black here? That king on f6 is so well placed. It can go to g6 when necessary, and it can go back to f6. It's controlling and defending both pawns, and white cannot attack both pawns at the same time. Shakriar hesitating. Rook f1. No, he's going to play rook h1, tying down wax king. But where to from here? He pushes that pawn up to f4. Shakriar trying everything he can to confuse his opponent. Vedit defending from the side. Rook b3, rook a3. Shakriar going back to c1, king f6, and rook forward to c6. Now he threatens f5, and he plays f5. And if Vidit takes it, Shakriar will get connected passers. I think this is winning for white. Oh man, what a, what amazing technique by Shakriar as he goes around. And now the h5 pawn cannot be defended. He's going to take it. And now he's going to defend his pawn with king f4. And rook a4 meets with e4. This is winning for Shakriar. This is an easy win. Rook h6. And he's got plenty of time. He's confident. And you can see the disappointment in the way Vidit is moving e4. And 
Rook B7, an exquisite effort by Shakira as he continues to push responds and Vidit throws in the towel. A great end game display by Shakira Mamadiarov. If you like this video, make sure to click on the link in the playlist for more of these videos. Thank you so much for watching.